the Bulls could have extended you this offseason. They chose to, you know, replenish the roster. Does that place a chip on your shoulder or do you look at that as just being a function of business? How did you take all of that? It's business. At the end of the day, I'll have my own things I want to go after. I have a lot of different motivations in my life that I try to use on the court, but I'm focused on, you know, obviously this next upcoming year and seeing how good I can help this team win and obviously keep developing myself and getting better as a player. Zach, I know you You just gave me a politically correct answer. I know what that means. I can see that chip on your shoulder right now. I can see it. It, grow, it grows every year, dog. <laughs> What's going on, Bulls fans? I'm back with another episode, my second one for today. Um, but we had some, I don't want to call it really big news or anything, but we had a couple of pieces of, of information dropped from Zach Levine. One was an, um, an interview with Vinny Goodwill, Vincent Goodwill. Um, and this is the one, when I read that headline, it's business um, and the chip on the shoulder thing. My mind immediately went to, oh, my God, how the bull skeptics are going to jump on this to use this as fuel that Zach Levine is actually leaving the bulls. And I think when you see the article, uh, I'm not sorry, when you see the video itself, also with the things that we know as, as fans of the bulls who follow this franchise, we know that Zach Levine has been a part of these decisions, of these conversations of what the bulls offseason plans were and what they ended up executing. But you know that there are going to be some that are already looking to jump on anything that they can to say that Zach Levine is leaving. This is a reason and point to why Zach Levine is leaving the Bulls. They're going to use that, that headline, just it's business um, and the chip on the shoulder thing. And one thing that, you know, in watching this, this video, and I played a little bit of the clip at the beginning of this and watching it, you know, I love the Vinny's interaction with, with, with Levine and him saying, I can, I can see the chip on your shoulder. And Levine saying, well, it's something every year. I use, I use a bunch of stuff for motivation. Um, and that's, you know, what I said in my video earlier today of what's going to make this Bulls team be such an exciting team is that chip on his shoulder is, you know, the rest of the team and how they feed off their best player in Zach Levine, having such a big chip on the shoulder and, and having something to prove that's going to make this team a, a great team to watch and, you know, to see how they, they feed off his energy and everything else going there is going to be exciting. But, you know, let, let's talk about it from, from the standpoint of like, how the mainstream and some, like I said, skeptics may look at this. That giving them that headline of it's just business and presenting it in the case that it was the Bulls deciding to fill out the roster rather than deciding to give Zach Levine an extension. I don't like that that language was used. I personally take, I don't, I don't like the way that that was worded because it does give it kind of a negative connotation when that really wasn't the case at all. It wasn't a, We're going to do this instead of extending Zach. It was more of a, hey, we're going to make these moves. We're going to make these deals. We're going to make and improve this roster so that we show Zach Levine that when he resigns for next year, he's committing to not only a team that's dedicated to winning, but a team and a front office that's going to do and make the the deals that it takes to put a, a winning team on the court. But that's, of course, not the headline grabbing thing. That's not the way that you want to present things. And, you know, At the end of the day, the way that I see it is that if they would have extended Zach Levine, it would have hurt with the move, the other moves that they were able to do. Now, granted, a lot of the moves that the Bulls made were the two major ones in Lonzo Ball and DeMar DeRozan were signing trades, meaning that they used contracts that we already had to bring those players in rather than sound them outright. Great deals, uh, great uh, GMing there and, and doing things there. But at the same time, had they extended Zach then, had they extended Zach this offseason, it would have absolutely affected the way that they were able to maneuver. We know that historically the Bulls have not been a luxury paying tax paying team. When they re-signed Zach Levine, notice that I said when, that's me holding my hope. Uh, when they re-sign Zach Levine, more than likely they will go into the luxury tax. But you want to do a few things there. You want to prove that you're putting a winning um, product out there. You want to prove to your your best player, what he's signing into long term. And then you also you just want to see what these players look like when they're given a better and improved roster. So you can look at your mobility and, and deals and things later. But you can also really take a look at, all right, now how are these players reacting to being on a winning team? How are these players reacting to being in a playoff setting? Those are the things that you want to do. Having this way of presenting it as it was a, we did this instead of extending Zach Levine, 
I don't, I don't, I just don't like the way that that was worded. That, you know, I take issue with that. I, I really, I, I feel like that just brings an automatic negative connotation to Zach's contract. Now, Zach saying the line of, I use so much for motivation. Um, you know, it's something every year. And not saying that with the Bulls, but it's something that he uses to motivate himself. That's what you want to hear from your best player. That's what you want to hear from a franchise player. That's what you want to hear. And Zach Levine should say those things. You know, when you compare, when you combine the whole respect thing that people took out of context, and now this, that's the, be prepared. Be prepared, Bulls fans, if it hasn't already happened. I know I'll try to get this episode as fast out as that I can, but if it hasn't already happened, Best believe it's going to be having that conversation is going to take off now on the fact that Zach Levine's leaving. What does it mean if Zach Levine be prepared for the headlines and the articles? Now it's going to be all types of think pieces on, you know, should the Bulls have extended Zach instead of making these? That narrative is going to go, but we're not going to keep that narrative here. Um, overall, you know, this conversation and this interview with Vinny Goodwill was a, a good one. And it, it's one that has me excited going into the season. Um, you know, Zach saying it's just business. It is just business. And I think that he understands that even when, you know, he got an offer sheet from the Kings and ended up coming back, he understood what the Bulls were doing with that. Uh, you know, and yes, it, I'm not saying that it doesn't add to a chip on the shoulder. It doesn't add to him feeling like he has something to prove. I'm not saying those things at all. But I am saying that Zach is a smart enough person where he understands the business of this. And if they've been keeping him as included as what it has seemed like they have, I don't think that there's any rift there. And if that conversation does start, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it if somebody reports on it or whatever, but I just, I just don't see it. Now, Zach was also in an article in Forbes in which he was interviewed, and specifically it talked about him and Vooch's you know, chemistry. And when they, Vooch first came on, Vooch was trying to defer to him to show Zach that, hey, this is still your team. Zach was trying to include Vooch to make sure that he knew that he wanted to play with him. And that just goes to show how that – I. I I think that that goes to show what that builds chemistry, right? To have two players that both that both were both so focused on making sure that the other one felt included and to make sure that they understood their place. You know, you, you uh, having an off season that's going to go away, and yeah, it affected the it affected the play of basketball. Zach said it in that interview, and that was something that you know we we hadn't talked about a lot about. Yes, Zach was out for a while. Zach talked about his frustration with the COVID thing. Vooch ended up going out for a while as well. And they didn't really get a chance to build that chemistry that we hoped that we, they would have built when we made that deal. Now, with that being said, we're getting a full off season now. That chemistry between everyone, um, hopefully it starts there. This team, even in the first month, two months of the season, is going to be vastly different than what they are in the back half of the season after they get a chance to not only build chemistry, go through some things. Like I say, build that collective chip on their shoulder and feed off their best player. But seeing Zach get these interviews and have these articles this is, goes back to another video that i did earlier it's going to be more of that throughout the season zach's being a free agent his stardom rising a gold medalist and signing with clutch sports going to get more and more and more of this as the season goes along and it's going to give us so much to talk about but let me know what you guys think about uh both these interviews that came out from zach levine what do you think about his comments did it affect you at all and your confidence in Zach Levine re-signing with the Bulls in this upcoming offseason? Or did you very much like me take it as, hey, that's just noise. We, we, we know Zach's been included and he's going to come back. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys' confidence on, is on the Bulls, um, you know, retaining Zach Levine. And this is going to be a conversation that we have all throughout the season of, is, Levex, in, is Levine Lazak? Is Levine staying or is he going? Everything, whether they go on a two or three game losing stretch, Oh, what does this mean for Zach Levine re-signing with the Chicago Bulls? If they go on that five-game winning, winning stretch, it's all going to be that, as well as other things that happen to maneuver around the league. That conversation is going to be something that we are going to be um, involved in as a franchise throughout the rest of the season. I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, if by the end of this, if the Bulls play the way that, the, that we think they are, if Zach specifically plays the way that we think he is, don't be surprised if throughout most of the season the conversation becomes, what the fuck is happening with Zach Levine and where is he going? Don't be surprised with it. That's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think down below. As always, make sure you like the video and subscribe as well. We keep growing every time I log in. It's, I, I got to stop. I gotta, I'm, I'm starting to obsess about, about it. Like It's so surprising to me. And, I, and I'm going to say this every time it's on my heart. I'm sorry if you guys are tired of hearing it. But 
it's so surprising to me that you guys are supporting at the level that you're doing because I started this not expecting much at all as far as support. I really didn't. It was me talking about my favorite team, and I really thank you guys and thank for the kind words and comments and everything. Be on the lookout. Uh, we will announce the winners of the giveaway at the end of next week. So this time next week, give a chance for everyone to kind of catch in uh, on that and submit. We've already had some people do uh, the requirements to, to get submitted in uh, in the running for to win free Bulls merch. So uh, be on the lookout as we announce that this time next week. But thank you for all the support. And as always, go Bulls. Peace. Thank you.